small video coming up this track which is um, skirting of Foxton Park actually there is another track that goes through the park that would take me out to a similar place up there where the um, the mat beaters are which in case there's a fire they have every now and again there's mat beaters about well, I've just walked up there it's a steady climb and uh, about seven or eight months ago I was coming down here and I caught I, I've got pictures of deer all in here and uh, it was really good I went through that gate with Georgia um, God, about eight years ago now, I suppose. <laughs> no, 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 2014. We went, we weaved through trying to find our way somewhere. Anyway, um, I don't really want to go off track. Well, I've still got a way to go up here. Well, I love the, all the old trees. <sighs> These big old trees, the guardians. <sighs> Three guardians are not in a very good way anymore. Um, you know, there's a really big one there. <sighs> Mondays are supposed to be deer hunting, stag hunting. And I did hear a load of dogs um, further over in the coombs. <sighs> they seem to confine it to that space all the time. You know, it's like really just like kettling them in the coombs, you know, that's what they do. They kettle them. <sighs> Look at that lovely tree with its big roots. Oh, hello, big tree. You're still trying to pump out oxygen for everyone, aren't you? <sighs> beautiful, beautiful tree you are. Big old wise tree. Wish you could give me some wisdom now. I need it badly. Dealing with hoodies and pot smokers and threateners of life. Uh, yeah, I could do with a I could do with some guidance there. They're lovely there, the leaves. Still pumping out a certain amount of oxygen, still. They're still photosynthesizing even when they're not totally all green. They they still is it a sand fruit fill or is it another name? Not chlorophyll, it's another name for the the yellow orange variety. I've got to keep the um camera on charge. It had def it had flattened itself. Um so normally what I do I always check the battery just before I come out or an hour before. I'd actually charged it up. I knew it was charged. But it decharged itself overnight when I put it in my bag ready to come out. And I've noticed it's done that several times. But I keep forgetting it does it. So normally I've got the battery charger as a backup. And the camera's already fully charged. So I'm, I'm depleted by half camera ability. But the battery charger's pretty good. Um, it'll probably ha well, it'll have to do. It will have to do. All I'm coming on is just to point out a bit more of the route going uphill instead of downhill today. And I'll be coming out to the open space in a minute of the Quantock Hills. This is the Quantock Hills, but... Oh, oh it's such a slog coming up there. You wear more clothes in the winter, so what it, that means is um, you've got more weight to carry up the hill. So though you might lose a bottle of water, you don't need so much water coming up here. You gain it with weight of big coats, big thick jumpers, heavy trousers. That's what I've got on. I've got all heavy stuff on. Because... It can change. I mean, I went up on the Mendips four or five days ago and it was very, very fierce, the wind. And as we all know, that's a chill factor. So even though I had what I've got on now and a hat, scarf and gloves, which I'm not wearing, I've put them in my bag. But I had a, 
a winter jumper on, but it still wasn't keeping me as cosy as I would have liked. So today I've got a very, very winter jumper on. And it's like wearing a, a sheepskin. It is so warm, but it's a lot heavier. These are all things you have to consider on the hikes. So although I'm looking around at the scenery, hoping to see a deer, looking at the beautiful trees and the autumn leaves, <clears throat> there's still other things to hiking that you've got to consider. So, that's what happens. Right, I'm going to turn off again now, folks. Uh, I'm going to look down there. We turned the corner now. It was quite a long way down. Past old Fox and House, which I visited at the start of the walk. And uh, I always do photos of it every single time I go there. Because <clears throat> that's going to be six or seven months since I passed there. And that, would have, that was during the spring. So this time it's in the autumn. And we've still got autumn for another month yet. This isn't winter. People think it's a bit cold and they put a the central heating on that. It's um, winter, it ain't. The real winter ain't arrived yet. Dread in it. Especially where I live. <sighs> These funny little fungi growing out there. Look. They're sort of growing where perhaps branches were once. Another big old tree, looking forlorn once one of the guardians. So we've got another big tree here guarding. There's another really big one at the entrance guarding. Little shelters people have made here out of the sticks. Yeah, that's not as big as a really big one down the bottom. Grand, great big tree, beautiful. Um, really with huge, huge roots. Spreading out. Yeah, this looks like some little camp that somebody would have made. I expect they bring the army cadets up here. Look. Where some people might have to live up in the woods at night. See? That's definitely a little camping area, isn't it? Ready for tonight's fire, look. Bit of evidence, plastic. All these branches add in a bit of <coughs> protection from the rain. Not very comfortable to sit on really, is it? It's all slopey. There's a bit of plastic there, look. They've left their evidence of them here. Whether people sleep in these areas, I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised. There's an awful lot of homelessness. And who's going to come up here at night looking? I think they send no coppers up here. They're short of policemen as it is. Ready for tonight's fire, look. Yeah, I suppose if you're desperate, you'd get in there, wouldn't you? You would go in there. With a sleeping bag. Oh, yeah, you would. You'd definitely get in there. Yeah, you would. You would definitely do it. Yeah, we all would. If we were desperate, we'd do it. You don't know that. You think, oh, I wouldn't do that. You would. I've had to camp out in the army cadets. We just make bivy. Bit of sheet between two trees. Get your roller roll up mat, lay it down, you just, you just have to sleep like that. I've done it. And it's, uh, you, you, you're knackered by the end of a session, a week out, doing that sort of thing. It does knacker you up. I used to wear thermal underwear, everything, long johns. I never really got cold. I took all precautions to protect me when I was doing that. Camping out and in different places with the, the army cadets. And this is main, I'm with adults with the training. 
we used to do all sorts. It wasn't, although it, it might seem like a game, it wasn't really. It was, you know, you were being taught by professionals. It wasn't really a game. So you'd, you remember things, huh? Little, little, little things that might possibly help you survive if you had to. Like if I broke my leg now, I always make sure I've got nutrients with me. And sweets are very important. They'll keep going for ages. A couple of boiled sweets. <sighs> right, here we come to the mat beating area. I've kept the video running longer than I intended. <sighs> but these people can see that on this date, which I can't remember what it is, <sighs> I really can't remember. It might be the 18th. Let me see, it's Monday. Yeah, it's the 18th of November 2019. And, uh, yeah. I'm going to walk around that way. Oh, there's some ponies coming. That's a lovely holly bush there, look, with the berries on. Look at that. Lovely. Really pretty. <sighs> Flaming bush. Yeah, it's a woman with. She's on a horse and she's bringing another one along with her. <sighs> right, I haven't. Oh, God, I don't know. I have done this. I've come the other way, usually. <sighs> right, over and out for a minute. Over and out. <sighs> 